absolutely. And I'm right on the other side of the door. I just can't have any contact with you. And I gotta sleep on the couch. <laughs> Which isn't weird at all. Totally normal. This is so weird. Super weird. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Becca, you've got nothing to apologize for. You were exposed at work. It's the risk that comes with being an essential worker. I sell lotions and bath bombs. I'm hardly essential. Hey, we picked this apartment because it had a bathtub. Pretty sure you said soaking in a bathtub is essential. True, it really is. <laughs> and we'll be back together on Christmas Eve at... 7.23. I've already been in here a few minutes. Yeah, then we'll call it 7. Do you need anything? No. It's perfect. Really, Mateo. It's like a little retreat. Thank you. Hey, check it out. I have a surprise. Ta-da! Our first Christmas tree! <laughs> oh. I got it at Dwayne Reed. I, I know it's not much, but... It's perfect! Uh, I wish I still had my Christmas stuff. I had a whole box, but... What happened to it? Uh, I went through a whole bunch of roommates in Greenpoint. I think one of them took off with it. Somebody stole your Christmas stuff? <laughs> no, not on purpose. We were just really bad at labeling things. Most of it doesn't matter. Oh, but I wish I had... Hold that thought. Dinner's ready. So, you were saying you wish you still had... Oh, right, okay, there's a story there. You've gotta have the story first or it won't make sense. Well then let's hear that story. Back in Miami, when I was a kid, they opened this outdoor mall in Coconut Grove called Coco Walk. Fancy stores, places for brunch, you get the idea. Anyway, there was a movie theater. That's how mommy would bribe me to go with her, see a movie, browse the shops she loved to browse. My mom was a big window shopper too. They had one of those Christmas all year stores, which to an eight year old is like the most amazing concept, right? It's like learning it could be your birthday all the time. Exactly. So, we're in the Christmas all year store and mommy says, Mateo, pick out something for the tree. An ornament that I picked out was gonna go on the family tree. That's a very big deal. Huge. But I didn't trust it. Like, she was still gonna vet my choice, right? So, I picked out a big, glittery yam. A yam? A yam. Like a sweet potato? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a yam. Why does that exist as a Christmas ornament? No idea. But I was gonna call her bluff. <laughs> There was no way that thing was getting approved. She bought it. Put that sparkly yam on the tree every year. And when I moved to New York, she told me I should take it with me. Because she knew how much it meant to you? No, because she hated it. It, it was hideous. <laughs> oh, then I really wish we had it. Did you check with Sebastian? Maybe you left it behind. Yeah, he looked. No luck. Sometimes things just, you know, get lost. You got any Christmas stuff around here that I should put up? No, we do all our decorating at Dad's house. <laughs> I can live up to Mom's legacy in that department, but there's no matching her cooking. I mean, literally, we can't. She never wrote down any of her recipes. Every Christmas, she used to make this ham hash brown thing. My brother and I try to recreate it and it's it's never quite right. But we have our memories. Yes, we do. Sebastian, any luck? I looked through all my stuff and I checked with Gareth too. You remember Gareth? He had the python. Not when he moved in, after. I think you should really disclose if you're a snake person when you respond to the ad. You don't just become a snake person later and expect people to adapt. The night after he and that python moved out, I slept better than I had in a year. I mean, I basically had a murderer on the other side of my wall all that time. 
waiting. Anyways, Gareth didn't have the box either. But you know, before Gareth moved in, Mateo's cousin Ivy was here for a couple of months. She'd be worth asking. I don't know how to reach her. Her mom would though. Aunt Cecilia, got it. Well, Mateo, I'll tell ya. I know there was ham. And I think there were English peas. Yeah, and Becca said there were hash brown potatoes? Yes. Yes, there were. Huh. Well, Becca seems to recall this better than I do. It's good to see you, Mateo. No, 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 no. Uh, Mr. Harrington, I wanted to make a dish to surprise her on Christmas Eve when she comes out of quarantine. Well, I think she'll like that very much. So, I was hoping maybe we could figure out the recipe and you could test it out first, see if we get it right. Oh, I see. Well, I can certainly try. Becca can't hear us right now, can she? Oh, no, she's taking a nap. <laughs> okay, good. You taking notes? Yes, sir. Write this down. Buttery, cheesy, salty, crunchy. We're gonna reverse engineer this thing. I gotta stay quiet. He thinks I'm taking a nap. I can't believe he lost the sparkly sweet potato. Mateo said it was a yam. Uh, it doesn't really resemble either. That ornament always looked like the cat got sick and someone hung it on the tree. But there's no applying logic to sentiment, you know what I mean? I suppose I do. Well, Ivy's not in the city anymore. She's in Silicon Valley working for a technology company, so she doesn't do social media. Is it not allowed? No, she just knows all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. <laughs> I'll send you her number. And I'm going to call the restaurant and have them deliver a caldo gallego. The broth is perfection, and it's going to bring you back to life. Oh, no. I feel fine. I'm just stuck in quarantine for a couple weeks. Oh. Oh, I just assumed because it's three in the afternoon and you... <sighs> so, don't send the soup? No, go ahead. It sounds amazing. Here it is. Now this is for green bean casserole. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but it calls for a cream of mushroom soup. Do you think that's something we should consider? Uh, Mr. Harrington, I'm worried we might be moving further away from it. You think so? I really do. Huh. You're right. Let's step back and go back to what we really know for certain, huh? Um, maybe it's time we considered calling reinforcements. Okay, I've been thinking on it and I have a suspicion. When I was living with Mateo and Sebastian, I was dating Dave. He got kicked out of his apartment and we let him crash on the couch for a few weeks. I didn't let him move into my room because I felt like we weren't in that right place yet. Do you think that Dave is... Well, turns out I have very good instincts because the entire time Dave was sleeping on my couch, he was texting with his ex-girlfriend, Simone. Which just... No. <sighs> She's an actress. She's been on Law & Order once, but come on. It's New York. Who the hell hasn't been on Law & Order? And 
They were still sharing an HBO Now account, which meant I could have been watching Insecure and Secession the entire time, and he never said anything. So eventually, I tell Dave to pack up and get out. This is like two in the morning. A bunch of stuff is in trash bags, and I'm thinking Mateo's Christmas box might have ended up in the mix, and maybe Dave has my cousin's glitter sweet potato. <sighs> I will never speak to Dave again as long as I live, but I can send you his email if you want it. This is getting a little more involved than I expected. Nathan Harrington, Becca's dad, meet my Aunt Cecilia. Oh. Cecilia El Castillo. <laughs> she is a chef. Well, aren't we lucky to have you? <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. Nathan, this casserole, uh, do you know if your wife came up with it on her own? Or m maybe she picked it up somewhere? It was her mother's recipe. I think that's probably why Diane never had to write it down. And she made it just like her mother did? Huh. If she hadn't, we would have heard about it. Her mother was a very particular woman. Where did Diane grow up? Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. Lutheran? Methodist. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. We are? Um, Midwestern Protestant 1970s. This is covered dish supper culture. Mateo. You're going to encounter a few things that we, as a family, have tried to shield you from. But I will walk you through it. Write this down. Condensed. Cheddar cheese. Soup. There's my kid sister. You calling it an early night? What? You look like you're ready for bed. Uh, yeah, sure. Listen, are you going to Dad's on Christmas Day? I'm not really sure, Patrick. I mean, of course I want to, but I'm not even allowed out of the apartment until the 24th. What about you guys? Jacob and I haven't been below 78th in nine months. I don't see us getting on a train to Pennsylvania. You and Jacob never went below 78th before the quarantine. My point remains the same. My sister's not going to Dad's on Christmas! Oh, Becca, you've got to. You don't want your dad to be all alone. You could go. I think we need to keep sheltering in place. We don't make the rules. Difficult times. So true. <laughs> you guys are going on vacation, aren't you? We leave tomorrow. It's not really a vacation. A friend owns a modest home in Sag Harbor. More of a cottage, really. And it's just sitting there, unoccupied. So we will still be sheltering in place. But we'll be moving to a new shelter. Just through New Year's. Then why don't you ask Dad to join you? Oh, I don't think he'd like it. A drafty little cottage? I worry about Dad and drafts. Mm. So then it falls on me to... Guys, I've got to get this. It's about Mateo's Christmas present. You know what I bet Mateo would love? A trip to Pennsylvania. Think about it. Hi, Dave? Back, uh, hello. An honor and a pleasure. Uh, yeah, you too. Thanks so much for getting back to me. You spoke with Ivy? Yes, I did. And how is Ivy? Still very mad at you. So, any chance that you've seen this box of Mateo's Christmas stuff? Well, it falls upon me to tell you, this is where your quest ends. I know exactly where it is. Oh, Dave, yes! Thank you! So, how do I get my hands on it? No, you misunderstand. This is where your quest ends. We're never getting our hands on that box of Christmas. 